So lesson four, we're going to be reviewing solving equations. And we're going to be doing that by practicing the distributive property, clearing fractions, and change sides. You change signs. We have a plus something over here. When you subtract it from both sides, it becomes a minus that something on the other side. So those are the skills that we will be reviewing in today's lesson. So for formula 36 out of lesson four, it is, it is the distributive property. So you're going to start out by writing down that left hand side. And distributive property is whenever you have one thing times the parentheses that has plus or minus signs in it. And I bet you guys remember what we do with the distributive property on this. So who can tell me what the right hand side of that equation is going to be? Haley. Perfect. Great remembering on that. And it could be a number out in front there, like a three. It could be an A, like you see here. It could be a three X squared. Or it could be something that is super, super messy, like what we are about to do. So now go back to your notes paper, not your formula page. And this is what we are going to distribute. So take a moment to get that copy down with all of those plus and minus exponents and everything in there. And can you agree with me that this is a pretty darn messy example of distributive property? But it is one weird messy thing on the outside and two things on the inside with a plus and minus sign between them. Now, first thing that I would do with this, I'd look at that b to the zero. Oh, can I clean that up a little bit? What can I do with anything to the zero? Everybody shout out. What's that? B to the zero is just going to be one. So I'm just going to change that to 2a to the minus 4 times 1, which is 2a to the minus 4. Now I need to do my distributing. So I'm going to take this whole thing times the first piece. And it is your choice on this. If you want to go ahead and put the a to the fourth down here, that's fine. You don't have to. You could do that at the end. I could say when I take this, I've got the 2 times the 2 is a 4. And if I take a to the minus 4 times a to the first, well, let's see if I did m squared times m cubed. What would I do with those exponents? I'd add. So I could say I need to add the minus 4 and the plus 1. So a to the minus 4 plus 1. And I could just think that and write down that that's a minus 3. Or I could write down the minus 4 plus 1 and write down that that's a minus 3. Then I've got times the 1. And then I've still got the b squared and the c when I multiply my numerators. When I multiply my denominators, I have c x squared. Now, what do you notice about the C's in this, Ted? So, C over C is just going to be 1. So, that means that this first term is going to be, I've got my 4, and then I have an A to the minus 3. So, it's going to go downstairs as a plus 3. And then I've got the b squared in the numerator. C's are gone. And I've got x squared. So that's my first term of this. Thumbs up, thumbs down. <clears throat> OK, let's do the second term. We're going to do the same thing now. We're going to take this 2a to the minus 4 times 1 times the a to the minus 2. So this time, I'm going to have the 2. And I'm going to have the a to the minus 4 plus the minus 2, or minus 6. And then the only other thing I've still got is the 1. So I don't need to write that down. And then in the denominator, I have c b to the minus 4, or b to the minus 4c if I go ahead with alphabetical order. 
Okay? I only have an A in the numerator, a B in the denominator, a C in the denominator, nothing that cancels. I just clean up the minus signs. So I am left with minus. 2 is going to stay in the numerator. It doesn't have a negative exponent. The A is a minus 6, so it goes downstairs in the denominator as a plus 6. The B has a negative exponent in the denominator, so it goes upstairs as a B to the plus 4. The C has a positive exponent, so it stays put. Are those like terms? Do they have the same variables in the same spots? The same mix? No, they're totally different. So we can't put them together. We can just stop. Questions on that? Yes. Um, so limiting in your homework, the exponent of negative 4 plus 1, do you want to show that? Or? Only if it helps you. If you do it accurately in your head, I'm okay with you not showing that. But don't try to do too many steps in your head. I don't try to do this and get to this all at once. I write a little bit of it down so that I can keep track of my own. Um, you, so anytime you get confused on your exponents, think back to something like this that's pretty simple. If you have m squared m cubed, you add. You've got m as the base on both of those. Because that's like m m times m m m, and so all together you have 5m being multiplied by each other. When you multiply them, that's if you have m squared cubed. And I don't have m written again as a base. Because this one means parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. And that means m squared times m squared times m squared. So I have m times m times m times m times m times m. And all together, I have m to the sixth. So anytime you get the rules confused, write down with something that's simple like that to help you remember. <laughs> if it's a, a, you only multiply if it's one thing with two x on the side. If you've got the same thing, the same base times the same base, you add them. If you have different bases, like the a to the sixth c, you can't put those together. You don't get anything for seven. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? Okay, next thing then, solutions for equations. If it says solve, that means you're getting x equals something for your answer. So we need to get all of our x's on one side by themselves and everything else on the other. But, we have something outside of parentheses. So when you're doing one like this, if there is distributing, I want you to distribute first. Don't try to clear fractions. Don't try to combine terms. Distribute first. So for this one, we're going to distribute on this side. So I'm going to say either 15 over 6 or 5 over 2 minus, and then when I take 3 times the 5 thirds, the 3 cancel, so I have minus 5x. So I distributed first. On the other side, I also have some distributing. I need to distribute that minus sign. It's like a negative 1 in front of there. So that needs to equal minus minus is plus a half and minus an x. Now, let's get the x's on one side and the numbers, the constants, on the other side. So let's add the 5x to both sides. And I have 4x over here on the right. If I want to get the numbers all on one side, I need to subtract that half. And what's 5 halves minus 1 half? 4 halves or 2. Divide both sides by 4. And x is a half. 
can't touch everybody. Now, some of you may have been thinking, when you get here, and there's no more distributing you can do, oh, well, I get rid of the fractions first, and especially if they were different, if it was five halves and one third or something, you could multiply by the LCD to get rid of your fractions. You could multiply everything by two and say five minus 10x equals one minus two x and keep going and you get the same answer. This is somebody who's thinking, oh, fractions, let's clear fractions. I want to point out, you don't clear fractions here because you can still distribute. But if you wanted to clear fractions here, that's fine. Or since this one was so easy just to go ahead and solve it, I get it that way. However, this one, let's do it with clearing fractions. So I just said we need to multiply both sides by the LCD. If I had a problem with halves and fourths and fifths, what would my least common denominator be for that one? Bryce, what do you think? What do you guys think? 2 times 10 is 20, 4 times 5 is 20, 5 times 4 is 20. We can get 20 from all of them. Notice we're not using 40. We're not using 2 times 4 times 5. We could, but we'd have bigger numbers and be more likely to make mistakes. So if we take the 20 times the first one, we still have the 3x, and the 20 over 2 becomes a 10. We have a minus. If we take the 20 times the 5 fourths, we still have a 5 in the numerator, but the 20 over the 4 becomes another 5. Now, this is just one term. This is one long numerator. So I still have 3x minus 1, and I need to put parentheses around it because it had a plus or minus sign in there. I still have that numerator, and the 20 over 5 becomes a 4. Okay, let's finish it up. What's my first term? Shout it out, everybody. 30x, next, minus 25. And now I need to distribute. So what if the number is on the right? It's still a parenthesis and a number being multiplied together. So I need to distribute that 4, giving 12x minus 4. Finish it. Give you a little bit of a head start. Get your x's together on one side. Get your numbers on the other side. It is not an integer. It is a fraction. See if you can reduce it or not. or you have an answer? Um, if it can't wait, um, we've got one more example. That's a few. So, Daniel, what'd you get? I got 7-6. Thumbs up if you got 7-6. Thumbs down if you got something different. Looks like I see an awful lot of thumbs up. So if we subtract the 12x on both sides, we have 18x. Add the 25, and we have 21. Divide both sides by 18, so we just have x. Those are both multiples of 3, so we do get 7 over 6. So great job. Okay, last example. So solve for y. That means isolate y. That means get to where you have y equal. Y is going to be equal to some formula with an x in it because I've got two variables and I've only got this one equation. So I need to get all the y's on one side, that's my only y, and everything else on the other side. So I'm going to leave the 3y there. And if the 2x goes to the other side, 
change sides, change signs, instead of a minus 2x, it's a plus 2x on the other side. Instead of a plus 5 on the right, it is a minus 5 on the left. And you don't need to write the scratch word, but that's because if you added 2x to both sides to get rid of it, and if you subtract the 5 on both sides to get rid of it, this is what you have. What do I do to change 3y to y? What am I going to do there, Melissa? Divide both sides by 3. So y is this? We don't want to say cross out with y equals that, so I'm going to rewrite just y is that, so I have a nice looking formula. And if you preferred, you could say that's 2x over 3 minus 5 over 3. Either way is correct. So anybody with questions?